have my teeth are wonderful, right? <laughs> but we teach you how to respect the beast. So, yeah, if you happen to be in the room during an x-ray procedure, these scatter radiation will also interact with you. And if it's not high enough, because we generally operate in the areas of between 70 and 90 kV, you're going to be absorbing all that radiation. But at higher kV, it's like scatter radiation is strong enough, it should go through you, but you can still have ionizing effects, not only to you, not only to the patient, but also to your film. <coughs> Does this make sense, guys? Even with my funky drawing? All right, so let's go ahead and continue on here. So that's what scatter radiation is. So scatter radiation exits, exits the body traveling in many directions with different energy levels. Scatter radiation, as I had portrayed in my beautiful drawing, is dangerous to the patient, dangerous to the technologist, dangerous to your film. Okay, questions? Here's an example of a knee x-ray. It's a bone, right? What color is bone supposed to be? White. In radio, in radio, it's supposed to be white. Does it look white to you? Mm -hmm. It's gray. This is what's caused the unwanted density from scatter radiation. It should be nice black and white, but it's very, very gray. That's what scatter radiation does. It causes unwanted densities or fog. So at higher KVs, increased scatter radiation increases fog on the film. With lower KVs, it's not going to be enough to penetrate the body and it's absorbed by the patient. This is where your knowledge on KV comes along. Okay, you were giving you the tools, you gotta to understand how to use those tools. Too high, too dark, scatter radiation. Too low, mostly attenuated, bad for the patient. So we gotta find that happy KV. Therefore, optimum KV is necessary where an adequate amount of X-ray photons reaches the film for adequate density. As we said earlier, highlight this KV selection has been standardized based on body part thickness. KV has been standardized based on body part thickness. Why did I just repeat it? Know that. You guys know me now, right? Why did I repeat it? Know it. This is probably going to be on the test or the quiz. Okay. So therefore, KV is primarily used to control radiographic contrast. How are we doing, guys? Are we doing excellent? That was just on KV. Time for some math. So this is what it is. Okay, we're dealing with the x-rays. X-rays is black and white in different shades of grays. So instead of colors, we deal with shades of blacks and whites and grays. This is the same image. Okay, this is colorized. This is what we call black and white. This is our tools of the trade. Okay, same thing. And each of the grays represents certain tissues in your body. Here's another one. Okay. Color bars in color, same color block, uh, color block in black and white. So each of the colors represents something. Okay. And you guys remember I Love Lucy. All the different shades of grays represent, otherwise, you know, if you didn't have all these shades of grays, you wouldn't be able to tell the door from the window, from Ricky, from Lucy, Fred and Ethel, the piano, the couch, the tablecloth, you wouldn't be able to do that. Okay. So the more parts there are to the part that you're trying to x-ray, the more shades of grays that we need to delineate one structure from the other. All right, let's talk about MA. Milliamperage controls the current flow to the cathode filament at the time of exposure. 
with higher MAs, what are we controlling there? We just said it. What are we controlling? The amount of electrons. The amount of the electrons that are being <coughs> boiled off from the filament through the process known as thermionic emission. Thermionic emission. <coughs> right? The higher the MA, the hotter the filament gets, the more electrons are boiled off. What are we controlling there? Quantity or quality? Quantity. Quantity. We're controlling the number of electrons being boiled off. Isn't the number of electrons also related to the number of X-ray photons that we produce? Right? Mm -hmm. So the more electrons that we boil off, the more X-ray photons we are producing, which is also controlling patient exposure. Right? So an increase in MA will increase the number of X-ray photons in the primary beam. It controls quantity, not quality, but quantity. The amount, the number. Unlike KV, your adjustment in MA is proportional to the density you're trying to produce. So when you double your MA, you're also doubling your overall radiographic density. So if I double my MA, it's going to be twice as dark. If I cut my MA by half, it's going to be half as dark. Okay, twice as twice as dark, or half the density, right? It's going to be half the density. So the relationship of mass selected in overall film density is proportional. So if I started off with 200 and I doubled it to 400, I'm also making it twice as dark. Here's the example. 200 MA, too light, let's go shoot it again. Okay. And now it's twice as dark. But you've got to be cautious when manipulating MA or time or mass is one unit. Because as I said earlier, when you're manipulating <coughs> mass, you're also manipulating what? Patient exposure. So if I doubled my MA, what am I doing to patient exposure? Doubling it. I've doubled my patient exposure. Okay? Because now I produce twice as many electrons, twice as many x-rays. <coughs> Is this making sense, guys? Is it soaking in? Here's the nuance. Although I said proportionally, it is very proportional. You double it, you double it. You cut in half, it cuts in half. However, all you need is a minimal change of 30 to 35 percent to see a visual change on your density. All you need is a minimal change a 30 to 35 percent in your mass to visualize a change in your radiographic density. So then why don't we just do that? Because doubling and cutting in half is just a lot easier. You can't do that with 15 percent rule with KV. You can do that with mass. So if I were to ask you what is the minimal amount necessary, the minimal amount necessary to see a visual change in your radiographic density, what are you going to tell me? 30, 30 to 35 percent of your what? KB? Mass. Of your mass. But you usually go in doubles just because it's It's just a lot easier. easier I can with. do it in my head. Right. You don't have to do the math 30 percent. No, you don't have to do the math. It's just a lot easier. Okay. MA has no relation to penetrating ability. What controls the penetrating ability? KV. KV. Therefore, it does not affect scatter radiation. So when we're talking about scatter radiation, it only relates to KV. It has nothing to do with MA or time or mass. It does with KV. So an increase in MA, however, will increase the amount of exposure absorbed by the patient. We already discussed that. If you're doubling your mass, you're also doubling what? Patient exposure, very good. Okay, let's talk about time. I just got to ask you. 
about time. <laughs> okay, it's about time. All right. So not only can we control the amount of electrons being boiled off at the filament end through the process of thermionic emission, we can also control our exposure time. The time needed to for us that we are allowing the electrons to travel from cathode to anode. The longer our time, the longer we are giving the electrons to travel. Therefore, if it's a longer time, more electrons can travel, right? Is that also controlling quantity? Mm -hmm. With shorter time, it's not a short time, so there's not a lot of electrons traveling from here to there. All right, so we're still controlling time. We're controlling exposure. So if you increase time, you're also increasing exposure. So here's my question. If I'm doubling my exposure time, what happens to my overall density? I can double? I'm doubling it. Remember, MA and time, we're treating it as one quantity, one unit, all right? So if I'm doubling my time, I'm also doubling my density. What else am I doing to patient exposure? I'm doubling my patient exposure. So when you double one, since they're a whole unit, do you double both? You know. I'm going to get to that. Okay. Okay. That's actually a great question, but let me get to that. Okay. So, what you're doing here, um, blah, blah, blah. so milliampere and time are combined and recognized as one single quantitative factor, mass, MA and time, milliampere seconds. An increase in mass increases the number of photons exposing the film. So, you can either double it as a whole, okay, as one unit as mass, or you can double MA, okay? or you can double time. So you can either treat them as one unit or you can treat them as separate unit. Whatever you do, if you're, whatever you're doubling, it's, it's gonna be double exposure. So you can do it as one unit or treat them separately. <clears throat> twice the MA or twice the seconds, you're doubling it. All right, we're gonna get into some serious math. You guys ready for this? <laughs> All right. Now, we need to take our tools and learn how to not just work with them individually, but work with them as a whole. As a whole, exactly, as a whole, okay? So what we're gonna be talking about here is KV and the mass relationship and its effect on overall density. We already know that if you increase or decrease your KV by 15%, you're doubling your density or cutting it in half. The same goes with mass. If you either double it or cut it in half, you're also doubling or cutting your mass in half. Those two, those two rules apply, okay? Whether it be 15% or the double cut in half for mass, we're talking about either doubling it or cutting it in half, plain and simple, okay? So, here I have a radiograph. A decrease in KV by 15% may be compensated for doubling the mass. What this is saying here is, okay, well, I decrease my KV by 15%. What happened to my overall density? It got went okay, down. It went down by how much? By half. By half. Okay? So now I have a radiographic image that's too light. But the reason why I decreased my 15% to begin with is not so much to control my density. What was it that I'm trying to control with my 15% rule of KV? Contrast. Contrast. So when I decrease my KV by 15%, what happened to my radiographic image? Is it going to be black and white or is it going to be very gray? Black and white. So decreasing by 15% is going to give me a more black and white image. Does everybody agree? Mm -hmm. Is that a high contrast or low contrast? High contrast. It's going to be high contrast. All right. But in doing so, in trying to control um, my contrast, I've also affected my density. Now, although I have a black and white image, my overall brightness or darkness is going to be too light. So I want to get it back to the original density the original overall darkness of my film, and how do I compensate for that? Doubling the mass. By doubling my mass. This is how you use it together. The key here is 
maintaining the same radiographic density. I went into the room knowing that a certain combination of technical factors will give me the best radiographic image. However, if I wanted to just change it slightly, change the contrast by making it more gray or more black and white, what I do for one, I have to do the opposite to the other. So if I go up with KV, 15%, what am I going to do with my mass to maintain the same radiographic density? Go down. I have to go down. So it's always so the inverse, right? It's always the opposite. But the key here is maintaining the same radiographic density. If I didn't care about maintaining the same radiographic density and I did one lighter film altogether, then this is where I would have stopped, just at 15%. I would have made it more black and white and it would have been a little bit lighter, but so what? The doctor wants it a little bit lighter. So I can kill two birds with one stone. But if they want you to maintain the same density, you can manipulate the contrast and manipulate the the blackness and whiteness of the image by manipulating your mass. So is there times when you just, you'll just manipulate one to give them what they want or? Exactly. So, it's so not the always question is, can I just manipulate one to give them what they want? The answer is yes. So it's not always both, right? It's not always both. If you're doing both, the key here is again maintaining. It's to maintain it. Okay, what you gotta do with one, you gotta do the opposite with the other to maintain it. If you just want it lighter or darker, just plain old lighter or darker, do one or the other. But don't do both, just one or the other. Manipulate the cave by 15% or double or half your mass. One or the other. You only do both to maintain. Everybody got it? Sure. <laughs> All right, so here's an example. The radiograph is made using 80 kV at 100 mass. The doctor says, you know what, I want a second radiograph at lower KV, but I like the overall darkness to it, so let's keep the darkness. But I want you to use lower KV. What's the whole purpose of lowering my KV? What am I trying to do there? Yeah, so I'm manipulating contrast, but what is this telling me? If I'm gonna decrease KV, what is that gonna equal? High contrast, right? That's high contrast. More black than white. <clears throat> All right. So there's two things that it's asking there. I want to lower the KV, but I also want to maintain the same density. First part of the question, I want to decrease my KV by 15%. 15% of 80 equals 12. I'm decreasing it, I'm lowering it, so 80 minus 12 gives me 68. What did I do when I decreased my KV by 15%? What happened to my overall density? It went down. Went down by half the density now. It's half the density. I want to get it back to the original density, is what it's saying. So to get it back to the original density, okay. what I do with one, I have to do the opposite, opposite with the other, okay? So what am I going to do with my mass? Double it. Okay. So two times one hundred gives me two hundred mass. This gets me back to the original density. So now my new technical factor is sixty-eight kV at two hundred mass. <coughs> this gave me a uh, radiographic image that was more black and white, and just the perfect density. All right, do we got it? Do we get it? Do we have it? Can we give it away? Okay. That was KV mass relationship. Now let's just talk about mass. The mass relationship, okay? MA and time. The MA and time relationship is inversely proportional because mass is considered as one value. An increase or decrease in one will require a decrease or increase in the other to maintain the same radiographic density. I like this. You can go crazy with this. What the heck does this mean? I'm going to give you a visual. It's always better with a visual, right? 
Always better with the visual. This is mass. Okay? This is my brain on mass. You guys awake? <laughs> this is mass. All right? I've got, let me see, there is 16.9 uh, fluid ounces. Let's call it 17. Let's call it 17 mass. Is that the same bottle? Okay, we got 17 mass. I need a volunteer who wants to get wet. No? <laughs> 17 mass. I can either pour the contents on my head really slow, is everybody awake? Or I can pour the contents of this bottle really fast. What is the total amount? It's still what? 17 mass is still 17 fluid ounces. It doesn't change. What I did change was my exposure time. Either really <clears throat> fast or really slow, it's still 17 fluid ounces. Okay, this is what we can do with manipulating MA and time. Because they are considered as one unit, we can manipulate one or the other to keep the same amount of total mass. Let's talk about this a little bit further. How can we apply this? All right, here's an example. A radiograph, a radiograph is made using 200 MA at 0.3 seconds. See, we separated the two. MA and time. 200 MA at 0.3 seconds at 90 kV. However, a second exposure is needed with the same mass in kV but using a 500 MA. What is my new exposure time? Basically what I'm asking here is I want something that's a little bit faster. I want a quicker exposure time. What am I going to be using a quicker exposure time for? Kids? The elderly? Somebody who may have Parkinson's and can't control the muscle twitching. You guys following? So I want a quick exposure time because the quicker exposure time will eliminate any type of motion on my film. Because motion on my film is bad for the image and I'd have to do it again. You can't do anything with motion on your film. So I want a quicker time. So if I were to plug in this formula Okay, this is inverse. You got old MA over new MA over new time over old time. Let's plug this in. My old MA is what? 200. 200. My new MA is 5 because that's what we want. We're looking for a, uh, a new time using 500 MA. All right. So this is what we're looking for is my new time. Here's my old time of 0.3 seconds. This is going to make sense here in a little bit, guys, so just bear with me. So once you cross multiply and divide, you guys, do we all know how to cross multiply and divide to solve for x? Mm -hmm. 0.3 times 200 divided by 500, okay? This is what I get. So now it's going to be uh, 500, uh, 60 divided by 100 will give me 0.12 seconds. All right, so this is what we're doing here. What is my mass? What is my mass that I originally started out with? 200 times 0.3 equals what? I ran out of ink. Equals what? 200 MA times 0.3 seconds gives me what is, I'm looking for mass here. 200.3 equals what, 60 mass? 60 mass. Okay, let's check, our, let's check our answers here. Here's our new one, 500 MA times, what did we just find? 0.12 
equals what? Equals 60 mass. Did you just see what I just did here? You checked your answer. What did I say? 17 is 17 is 17. Mass is mass is mass is mass. Okay? What I'm doing is I'm manipulating the time as long as I am maintaining the total mass. Okay? So when I was looking at this equation originally, my key here is remember if I increase one, I have to decrease the other to get it back to to yes. your original mass. If I increase one, I gotta decrease the other. If I decrease one, I've got to increase the other to bring it back to balance. Okay? Because what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to maintain the same exposure by manipulating time. My total mass and my total exposure is going to remain the same. And I should have been able to, to figure that out by just looking at this question because it said I started, I'm starting off with 200 MA. I want a new time using 500 MA. That should have just clued me in right there because it's, I'm not using 200, I'm gonna be using 500. And because I'm using 500, what is that telling me about time? Am I looking for a long time or a short time? A short time. Did we get a shorter time? Mm -hmm. We did, because we had 0.3 and now we have 0.12. But it didn't matter because I ended up with the same mass, same exposure. I just, I just now have a quicker time. This concept is known as the reciprocity law. The reciprocity law, which indicates that flattening on the film remains constant. It remains constant. As long as the total energy, what are we talking about here, total energy? We're talking about mass, right? As long as mass is what? Is constant. As long as mass is constant. <clears throat> Any questions? You guys are soaking this in. Or you're just tired. <laughs> or you're soaking it in and you're tired. All right. Time, like MA, has no effect on the penetrating ability. What is responsible for that? KV. KV. Okay. And this is where the recipro reciprocating law comes in. Law of reciprocity. Short exposure times are necessary to prevent patient motion during exposures, which is detrimental to film quality. Now, there may be some times where I may have to lengthen my exposure time. And it sounds like I'm going to be lengthening my patient exposure, right? Well, not unless I decrease my MA, right? If I lengthen my time, I can decrease my MA and still have the same amount of exposure. Because there will be times where I want a lengthy exposure, because I do want motion in my film. And we'll talk about that some other day. So there are times we want to stop motion, there are times where we actually want motion to help us out. All right, let's talk about distance. Any questions on MA time in seconds? All right, distance. Distance represents the length of the distance between the x ray source to the image receptor. The image receptor is just plainly your film, your cassette, okay, your image receptor. The intensity of the x-ray beam is affected by changes in your distance. We're specific here to source to image distance. The source is your x-ray tube, okay, and your image is your image receptor or your cassette or your film or your PSP. Okay, that's your image receptor. So SID then is the distance from your source to your image receptor. SID, source to image distance. 
So changes in your source to image distance can also affect the overall intensity of your x-ray beam. Generally speaking, when SID is doubled, the same number of photons is spread over an area four times the original area. Therefore, the intensity of the beam is reduced to a fourth of the original density. So if we look at this image here, you've got the same quantity of photons okay, at 40 inches covering this area. However, the x-ray beam, just like light, diverges. It spreads out. It's still traveling in a straight line, but it's diverging. And because it's diverging, the longer you are, the further you are away from your SID, the more grounds that it has to cover. Okay, same amount here, but now it's spread out. What do you think is gonna to happen to the intensity of the beam? It's gonna go down. It's gonna go down. I'm not gonna paint you a picture this time. I am going to show you a demonstration, okay? 